So we are bringing our weathering and erosion notes to a close with soil. All right, so soil is not really going to be defined as something as much as it is something. So it is made up of loose, weathered rock or broken down rock and organic material. If you remember, organic means it came from something that was once living and also contains carbon. All right, so soil on average is made up mostly of minerals. Okay, 45% of it are minerals, 25% of it's water, 25% air, and 5% organic matter. The rocky material in soil is made up of four different parts, So, and you don't necessarily have to have all four. Gravel, sand, clay, and silt. Gravel is our largest particle, and it feels coarse. Sand feels like sand. It's gritty. Silt, you can see, look at that. It's just this little dot. It's very fine, so it feels like flour. And clay, its particle sizes are actually invisible, but it feels sticky when wet, and it's real smooth. Here's a picture. We have our parts of soil. So here's our organic matter. Here's our sand, silt, clay. We don't really have any gravelly stuff. All right, so if we were going to cut the ground open and look at it from like a side view, you would see what's called a soil profile. Okay, that's a cross section of the soil and its bedrock. So it shows you all in all what the soil is made up of, what it looks like, and, ha and it ends up having different layers or horizons. There's three main horizons that we're going to talk about, A, B, C, and then these bricks down here are called your bedrock. Alright, the A horizon is also known as our topsoil. It's a mixture of organic materials and also small rocks. So if there's anything alive in the dirt or the soil, it's going to live in this layer. So we're talking things like ants, worms, you know, small bugs, roly-polies. All right, and as these organisms die, their remains will decay along with, uh, you know, plant leaves and dead grass and things like that and produce what's called hummus or humus. And it's only spelled with one M, so it's not really like hummus, hummus. So hummus is decayed plant and animal matter. All right, you also notice, if I didn't cover it up with this arrow, that there's an O horizon. The O horizon, if it's present, O means organic. So that's the organic layer, and you see it's all the leaves. All right, the B horizon is also known as the subsoil, and the B horizon is uh, known for all the minerals that it contains because when it rains and things like that, Minerals are leached from the topsoil or they come out of the topsoil and go into the B horizon. Okay, so for that reason, our B horizon contains most of the soil's nutrients. You can see the roots of the plant actually penetrate, which is really good for the plant. All right, the C horizon is also known as the transition layer. There's really no organic material, and you can see in this picture here, it just kind of looks like rocks. It's partially weathered bedrock. All right, bedrock is the parent material. So it's transitioning from straight up rock to soil. And as I was telling you earlier, below the sea horizon is the bedrock or the parent material. So this is the original founding rock in this area. All right, so here's another look at our soil horizons. We have our O horizon, which is our organic layer. Right, it contains all the dead leaves and things like that, living things. We have our A horizon, which is our topsoil. And remember, if there's no O horizon, the A is both of these. All right, we have our B horizon. You see mineral soil because that contains most of our minerals. It's also known as the subsoil. We have our C horizon, our weathered parent material, and below our C horizon is our bedrock. Okay, so where would you find the humus? And hopefully you would say right here in the organic layer because that's where, you know, dead plants and things like that will tend to be. All right, this should look really, really similar to a diagram that you have on your paper. All right, so we have a layer here, 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 and you can even say there's a layer here. So this bottom one, I like to start from the bottom. The bricks are always going to be our bedrock. 
Okay, one step up, our partially weathered bedrock is our C. All right, look, our roots are here. We got leaching going on. We got lots of minerals. That's our B layer. Here's our A layer or our topsoil. And then we would have our O layer where all of our organic matter will be. As far as making soil goes, there's five factors that will influence or affect the development of soil. They are what the parent material is, what kind of climate you're in, what kind of living organisms inhabit the area, topography, which if you remember means lay of the land, right? So hills, valleys, things like that. And then of course time. All right, so like we just discussed, the parent material refers to the bedrock or the minerals and organic materials present during the soil's formation. So this is ultimately the material that the soil comes from. And it could be from volcanic rock set or sediments that have decomposed in place or been deposited by wind, water, or ice. And if you remember, these are agents of erosion. So erosion can bring uh, soil to an area or remove soil from an area. All right, so here's a timeline for you on soil formation. So first, you know, our first step, we have our bedrock, and our bedrock will begin to be weathered, right, and disintegrate. And then uh, eventually some of these rocks will break down and we can have some living organisms like lichens and moss break them down further and create some organic matter, okay? And then again, this is over long, long periods of time. So after long, long periods of time of plants and organic things inhabiting the area, it will actually continue to turn the ground into more fertile soil, Okay, and you see we have our A horizon, our C horizon, and our bedrock. We don't have our B horizon yet. Our last step, so after long, long, long periods of time, we're going to end up with our A horizon, our B horizon, our C horizon, and our bedrock. Okay, so it takes a long, long time for soil to form. That's why it's important to conserve it. All right, depending on which climate, you know, hot and dry or wet you live in, determines uh, how fast the rocks can weather. So that will also help determine the composition of the soil. So if you live in tropical locations where it's humid and warm with lots of rainfall, uh, it, it will keep the A horizon will end up being really thin because lots of rains leach all sorts of nutrients out of the top layer and actually you, have, you end up with this really large B horizon. All right, temperate soils are like where we live. Of course, it's perfect like everything else, right? All right, we have moderate temperatures and, you know, moderate rainfall range. So we have some awesome looking soil layers. We got them all and they're all pretty much, you know, even and contain nice nutrients and they're pretty nice and thick. All right, so in desert and Arctic soils, rainfall is really low and temperatures are extreme. They're either extremely hot or they're extremely cold. Okay, so you see here we have a very, uh, very little amount of O layer. Okay, very small O and A layer. We actually have a little bit larger of a B layer, but it's not as mineral rich with good fertile minerals as they are when they're in the forest because you're in a desert and you're in really, really cold environments. All right, living organisms influence uh, how soil forms. So uh, things like moles, earthworms, bacteria, fungi, roundworms, they all live in the soil and they actually, they help the soil. So it's good that they're in there. It's really awesome to have earthworms. Okay, so they, earthworms especially decompose things and make nutrients available for plants, and they also help water flow through the soil. Same things with fungi. Fungi decompose and make nutrients available for plants, and we all know plants help enrich the soil, so they're very super helpful. They're awesome to have. You need them. All right, the topography or the slope or the hilliness of the land can actually affect how the soil forms as well. So we know rainwater runs downhill, all right, and it will end up washing away topsoil. So the soil at the top and, and the bottom of the slope, right here, the top and the bottom, end up being much thicker than what's in the middle.
All right, and time is the last thing. It takes hundreds of years to form one inch of soil from parent material, which is why soil conservation is so important, which is uh, soil conservation when they want to re reduce soil erosion or reduce the movement of soil from an area and preserve the fertile topsoil that's already there.